Why plastic surgery? Well, simply because it's the coolest specialty. Hello friends, if you're new here, my name is Malki Asad, a plastic surgery resident in the US. And in this video, I'm gonna try to convince you why plastic surgery is the coolest specialty and why you should pursue it as a career choice. Before we get started, make sure to check out the courses and services we provide for medical students and residency applicants on our website, thematchguide.com. Before we start talking about the multiple reasons why plastic surgery is the coolest specialty, I wanna give you an idea about what plastic surgery includes. Because whenever you mention plastic surgery to someone, the first thing that comes to their mind is cosmetic surgery. However, plastic surgery is much broader than that and it includes a variety of subspecialty under plastic surgery. So what does the field of plastic surgery include? Plastic surgery could be divided into four main subcategories or subspecialties. The first is hand. And in so many countries, hand could be considered under orthopedic surgery. But in the US, hand is shared specialty between plastic surgery and orthopedic surgery. So plastic surgeons treat hand fractures, that includes the fingers, the metacarpals, the bone that are here, wrist fractures sometimes, the distal radius fracture, they repair tendons. If somebody cuts their fingers, they put it back together by tying the arteries, the vein, the nerves. Plastic surgeons also specialize in repairing nerves. So patients who have problems with their nerve, the ulnar nerve, the median nerve, or even brachial plexus, these could be also under plastic surgery. Repairing congenital hand, which are diseases that people are born with, uh, that cause problems with their hand and plastic surgeons also have very innovative techniques of making the hand functional of young children. So hand is the first subspecialty of plastic surgery that most residency programs in the US train residents in. The second subspecialty of plastic surgery is craniofacial and craniofacial includes the adult craniofacial and pediatric craniofacial. Pediatric craniofacial relates to children. So if a children is born with a cleft lip, or cleft palate, or they have a problem with the way the uh, bones of the skull are attached together. We call this uh, syndrome craniosynostosis. Plastic surgeons uh, intervene and fix the lip, fix the palate, try to remodel the cranial vault to lead to good function and good outcomes. Adult craniofacial surgery mainly includes trauma to the face. So if a patient has a mandibular fracture or orbital fracture, maxillar fracture, plastic surgeons intervene and do surgery to fix these problems. And one of the coolest surgeries for adult and pediatric craniofacial surgeries, in my opinion, is the orthognathic surgery. So the surgery in which you advance the jaw, the lower uh, jaw, the mandible, or you advance the maxilla because someone has a sunken maxilla. These are amazing surgeries and have significant outcomes on the patients. After we discussed hand craniofacial, now we're gonna go to the third subspecialty of plastic surgery, which is reconstruction. And in my opinion, this is the coolest subspecialty of plastic surgery because of the amount of innovation under reconstruction. So if someone has a defect as a result of cancer, as a result of trauma, plastic surgery come and do different things to fill that defect. They could be moving skin, they could be moving muscles, they could be moving bones. These movement of soft tissue or bones could be from local tissues. So you would move a piece of skin from here to there, or you would take a piece of skin from uh, the leg to the face or vice versa. These tissues could be relying fully on the blood supply from the recipient area. So if you take a piece of skin from the leg and put it in here, it can be considered as a skin graft and it can live on its own. But sometimes the blood supply of the recipient is not enough to support what you're taking from the leg to the face, for example, and you need to attach the arteries and the vessels. And here comes the field of microsurgery under reconstruction, which is an amazing field. I've scrubbed into multiple cases in which you work under the microscope. So microsurgery comes from the, uh, the microscope because you would bring the microscope inside the OR, inside the operating room. And after you take a piece of skin from somewhere with its artery and its vein, and you put it in the recipient area where the defect is, and you would attach the artery and the vein and sometimes the nerves to restore function and fill the defect in the recipient area. You see how cool it is? Now the majority of reconstruction in the US is breast reconstruction after removal of the breast for breast cancer, lower extremity reconstruction for trauma, or head and neck reconstruction after tumors or trauma. And head and neck reconstruction is another very cool subspecialty of plastic surgery because of the amount of innovation, the complexity, and the effect that you would have on patients' lives. Just imagine a case in which a patient got a cancer to their larynx or their pharynx, which are very complicated cancers to remove, and the defects would be humongous after uh, such surgeries. 
And imagine the effect on patients' quality of life. They won't be able to eat, they won't be able to talk. And being able to reconstruct these defects with soft tissue being taken from somewhere to another, attaching the artery and the vein, and then being able to do these functions afterwards is just amazing. Now, after we discussed hand craniofacial reconstruction, we're gonna go to cosmetic, which is the most popular uh, subspecialty of plastic surgery. Cosmetic surgery includes everything that improves the cosmesis or the aesthetic outcomes of patients. This can range from rhinoplasty or what is known as a nose job, a blepharoplasty where you fix the eyelids, hair transplant, uh, orthognathic surgery could be sometimes considered uh, cosmetic surgery, breast augmentation, abdominoplasty, and a variety of cosmetic surgeries. What's unique about cosmetic surgery is the creativity and attention to, to details that you should have in order to achieve a good outcome. Because uh, in most surgeries, you would be working not on the surface where everything is visible to the eye. So if you're doing a facelift, everything is visible. So if you do something wrong, it would be very obvious to the patient and that would lead to a negative outcome. The same with a nose job, with hair transplant. So the, what makes cosmetic surgery unique is the attention to details trying to achieve a perfect outcome. Now, after we talked about the force of specialties of plastic surgery, I'm gonna talk about how long does it take to be trained to become a plastic surgeon. In the US, plastic surgery residency programs are six years of clinical training. However, some programs require to do one or two years of research, so you end up spending around seven or eight years. But generally, it's six years of clinical training to become a plastic surgeon. At the end of your training, you become eligible to take the board and become a board certified plastic surgeon. However, especially now with the new technology and people doing more specializations, if you wanna work in an academic institution or do uh, more advanced surgeries, most hospitals require to do some type of fellowship. It's not mandatory to do a fellowship to be able to do certain things, but most graduates now of uh, different plastic surgery programs are doing fellowships if they want to specialize in a certain area of plastic surgery. And as I said, the four main fellowships after plastic surgery residency are uh, microsurgery, which is under the reconstruction, uh, hand, cosmetic surgery, and craniofacial. Plastic surgery residency might be shortened in other countries. For example, in Canada, it's five years. In other European countries, it varies between five and six. But generally, plastic surgery training around the world is between five and six years. In the US, there is another route to become a plastic surgeon, which is to finish a full general surgery training and then apply to plastic surgery as a fellowship. So you would train for five years in a general surgery residency program, and then you would do three years of plastic surgery fellowship. Now going to the question of why plastic surgery is the coolest specialty and why I chose to go into plastic surgery. The first reason is the amount of creativity and the artistic nature of plastic surgery procedures. If you look at different surgical specialties, there are algorithms, there are ways that you remove certain cancers, guidelines that you have to follow, certain margins, but plastic surgery procedures are, are different because you are faced with a defect and you have to fill it with soft tissue or bones. And there are so many ways you can fix the defect and end up with a good outcome. There is no one single way. You would find Dr. X doing it in one way and it's amazing outcome, Dr. Y doing it in another way and they're also having amazing outcomes. So the amount of creativity and the space for you to think outside the box and find different solutions, better solutions for the surgical problem is what makes plastic surgery unique from other surgical specialties. Another very unique characteristic of plastic surgery is its broad spectrum. It includes surgeries from head to toe. And this is very unique to plastic surgery because plastic surgeons work on, work on reconstructing the face, the scalp, bones, soft tissues of the upper extremity, chest, the back, they reconstruct spine uh, when there is big defects, abdomen, lower extremity. Uh, it's amazing how broad the anatomy is and how you should have this broad knowledge to be able to understand and perform plastic surgeries. The third reason why I love plastic surgery and I think it makes it a very unique specialty is the impact it has on patients' lives. Plastic surgery procedures mainly focus on function and quality of life. So if you look at hand procedures, for example, a patient can live without a hand, but they won't be living the life that they are looking for. They would not be maybe working, they will not be supporting their family, contributing to the society, making themselves feel that they are doing something. And this is very unique and important to patients' lives because we always focus on recurrence, survival. When you're doing cancer, we extend patient life by a day or, or a month or a year. But how did the patient uh, live during this life? Did they have a good 
quality of life were they functional and this is where plastic surgery comes you remove a defect but we fill the defects for you so you can go and continue your life afterwards if you have an, a hand amputation we put it back so you can be able to work again you can play back the piano the effect that plastic surgeries have on patients is phenomenal and the once you see what patients do after these plastic sur surgeries you would understand why plastic surgery is an extremely unique specialty. So many people think that we don't do research in plastic surgery and this is very wrong because plastic surgery has very innovative research and the type of research that plastic surgeons do could be divided into clinical and basic science. Clinical research mainly focuses on the outcomes of hand, reconstruction, the cosmetic surgery outcomes and also craniofacial. The basic uh, science route includes tissue engineering, wound healing, uh, nerve regeneration and many other forms. So many students applying to med school or residency might not know that plastic surgeons do wound healing research. They do nerve regeneration research, tissue engineering research. Plastic surgeons do one of the most innovative types of research and don't think if you come to plastic surgery, you won't be able to do research. Another reason that made me go into plastic surgery is the people. The attendings, the residents, the students pursuing plastic surgery are all amazing people and they make you feel part of the family. And it's very important to feel that whenever you're in training, whenever in the specialty afterward, whenever you're working as a plastic surgeon, to feel that you belong to this body of different surgeons around the country and around the world. And once you join a plastic surgery conference or meeting, you'd understand what I'm talking about. Lifestyle of plastic surgeons is definitely a plus because compared to other specialties, I would say plastic surgeons have a reasonably good lifestyle with good salaries. Because if you look at the average salary of a plastic surgeon in the US, it's around $400,000, but this is before tax. So after you remove the tax, you might end up with something around $250,000. But the salary of plastic surgeons vary a lot, vary based on the subspecialty you're working in and based on whether you're working in an academic institution or private practice. Definitely cosmetic surgeons make the most out of all the subspecialties and those in private practice make much more money than in academic institutions. So some plastic surgeons might make uh, 250 before tax or 300, 400 based on where they work and some plastic surgeons make two or three or even 10 million a year. As with everything in life, nothing is perfect. Training into plastic surgery definitely has its downsides. And in my opinion, the main downside of training to become plastic surgeon is the competition from other specialties. Because as I told you how you as a plastic surgeon in the US work on the hand, so you're also competi competing with the orthopedic surgeons who also wanna take these procedures. When you're working on the face, you're competing with the head and neck surgeons. So in the US, in the last few years, head and neck surgeons mainly took the head and neck reconstructions from plastic surgeons. Rhinoplasty, for example, could be done by an ENT surgeon or by a plastic surgeon. Other procedures, now breast surgeons are looking to do the breast reconstruction after mastectomy. So plastic surgery is facing that uh, competition from other specialties who are working closely with plastic surgeons. And some feel that these subspecialties would be taking over plastic surgery procedures over the next decade or so. Another thing is research. As I said, there are amazing types of research under plastic surgery, but some consider the plastic surgery outcomes not as easily identifiable as cancer, for example. Cancer has a very specific survival, number of days, number of months, recurrence rates that you can quantify. But in plastic surgery procedures, sometimes a good outcome is how it looks, which is very hard to quantify. For example, the outcomes of cosmetic surgery would vary based on who is evaluating them. The outcomes of reconstruction, you might fill the defect with different ways, and you might think that this is a good outcome, it looks good, but the patient might not, or another surgeon might not. So plastic surgery is a little bit unique, especially in the clinical research arena, because the outcomes are hard to define compared to other surgical specialties. And that brings us to the end of this video of why plastic surgery is the coolest specialty. I hope after watching this video, I convinced you to pursue plastic surgery as a specialty. If you still have any questions and you would like to talk to someone one-on-one -on -one to learn more about the specialty and decide whether this is a good fit for you, go ahead and schedule a consultation one-on-one -on -one with one of our advisors to learn more about the specialty and make the right decision for your career. If you find any value in this video, go ahead and click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell sign so you get notified whenever I post future videos on my YouTube channel. Thank you everyone so much for watching, and good luck on your journey.